Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you like what I do, then please make a donation. It's paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Uh, I've also got a few other websites and podcasts, 45 actually in total uh, podcasts. I've got six websites and the other sleep ones that you might be interested in, uh, they're more, I don't want to use the word serious, but I guess well, they're definitely more serious than this. Um, deep sleep whisper hypnosis. That's one podcast. Or if you just go to deepsleepwhisper.com. Uh, I'm sure there's another one. Oh yeah. Sleephypnosisweekly.com. Um... Oh, and I've got a website, freesleephypnosis.com, which has got all of my sleep sessions going back years and years and years. There's 393, I think, uh, recordings on there. Very, you know, this uh, pod, this uh like little courses that I've done in the past, like a seven day cure insomnia course. There's, yeah, there's a variety of different things, including this podcast and, you know, all the others. So, yeah. I've also got a website called Free M. What was it? <laughs> Free Hypnosis MP3s dot com. Free Hypnosis MP3s dot com, and that has I'm in the middle of doing that one, so it's not completed. But that will have every recording, pretty much that's available, apart from probably. A hundred or so short, really short ones that I've just left out. But every course I've done chronic pain, relaxation, insomnia, uh, as well as the self help motivational ones, uh, plus all the various different courses I've done. So all that stuff is going to be on that website, which I'm in the middle of building. I think I've got about 190 odd on there at the moment and it's put another 700 to go so it's going to take me a, a few days to do that but it'll be worth it and uh, yeah so it's probably enough of did I ever tell you <laughs> did I ever tell you how I got into web design you know I've used every every single website host I think that exists every website builder online it's amazing it's uh started off in 2000 the year the year was 2000 and it was because I'd already learnt hypnosis I started studying hypnosis in 1998 
I bought two books in January. And I'd been looking at these books during the tail end of 1997. And I had this, I don't know, like a little fascination. But it seemed a bit um, mystical to me. So I kind of wasn't sure if I wanted to kind of... I wasn't sure if it was something that I'd be interested in. Or something that I'd want to get involved in. Well, clearly I have. For the last 21 years. And... Is it 21 years? Wow. 80... 1998... So 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. So that's 10 years. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014... 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, so that's 20 years, 2019, so it's 21 years I've been studying hypnosis, and wow, but yeah, so in 2000 I was with my cousin my little cousin he's not little but he was younger and he was a musical genius he's absolutely he was just he seemed to be able to just pick up any musical instrument and get a tune out of it and he was really a whiz kid when it came to computers uh creating music on a computer as well as I don't know just, just, he's just amazing really at what, at what he was doing and he we used to make uh, songs, we used to like record songs uh, every now and then and we'd like write a song so I'd uh spent absolute ages like trying to think of the lyrics and coming up with something and I think I bored him because it just he wanted to do it just went a bit bit too slow for him I think Um, and I'm you know I'm a plodder I like to just I like just to settle down and spend hours and hours and hours doing something not everything but and I, he, him, and and his dad were really into coding. They just became interested in coding. Now his dad was more interested in the um, like how the operating system of the computer which was something that I wasn't interested in, but which is way more complicated than building websites. And he was learning how to give the computer commands. And this is, you know, that's how it used to be in the old days. When you get a computer, you'd have to, you know, in the early 80s, you'd have to kind of put in a command, what you wanted, to do, what you wanted it to do. In 2000, the computers were fairly sophisticated, and they had the we had Apple, the iOS, I guess, operating system, or the Apple operating system, and then you had the the Windows operating system. Was it Windows 98? I'm sure it was. And it was at Windows 95. 
So me and my cousin, he, he was really interested in building websites. And see, I hadn't really embraced the internet at that time. I didn't have internet at home. Um, I had access to it a couple of different places, but I didn't. You know, I wasn't really that interested. I mean, I had a computer that I bought in probably ninety nine, and it was probably cost me about a thousand pound. And I didn't use it. There was like, I just got this big monitor and, you know, it was like a, what do they call it, a tower, you know, the little tower, which was the the hard drive and stuff. But I didn't use it. I just, it was just there. Because I didn't know what to use it for. There was like, I don't know, it's kind of like having a car with no petrol. There was, with no petrol and no destination. It was like a bit pointless. It was like, look nice, look nice. And I could tap away the keyboard and stuff and could play games. There was games on it. But. It's like, uh, you know, mm. it wasn't anything to do with it. It just wasn't just, I've never really been a gamer. I just, I think the only, I used to like Atari games. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember pretty much the first video games that ever came out and one of the first video games was I forget what it was called but it was literally just a it had a little nozzle each a little knob that you used to turn and it'd be like a tennis like a ball going from one side of the screen to the other and it'd be like beep beep I'd, it was I'm probably not explaining it very well but it was a lot of fun and then I suppose you had things like well there was um, what was it called Donkey Kong but before that Space Invaders and Pac-Man and I suppose a few others sort of similar things um, is Tetris was that another one I forget but and these big machines you know you go to places and like in a pub they used to have them in pubs and various different places you'd have these machines where you could and sometimes it'd have like a uh, be like a table so like there'd be a glass really thick glass or plastic cover so that you know it, it was protected and people would put their pints of beer on one one part of it and then they'd sit down and they'd be playing Space Invaders, and they'd pay like a pound or fifty pence a game or what, twenty pence a game. I don't know. I say twenty pe- twenty pence is, didn't exist back then. And I think twenty pences only came in in the eighties, like late eighties. I think maybe even nineties. I forget. Because when I was a kid, we 
we had, what was it, one pence. We used to have half pences. They don't exist anymore. Because you used to be able to um, buy, you used to be able to go into a shop and things would be like 12 and a half pence. Like, you won't see that anymore. So we used to have a half pence, a one pence, two pence, five pence, ten pence, fifty pence, one pound note, five pound note, ten pound note. I'm guessing probably twenty pound note. I don't remember, and a fifty pound note. I don't know when the, if the twenty pounds always been there. And if not, none of it's always been there because it used to have. They used to have different currency, like going back to the sixties and stuff. They used to, to have four bob notes or something. I don't know. Some kind of weird currency. And, uh, and then, I don't know when it was, but the half penny, half pence piece just got divorced, you know, just left, got rid of that. And then they introduced. 20 pence piece I'm sure that was that was around like middle 80s I think and then the pound note got replaced by a pound coin I think that was in the 80s as well that might be in the 90s and then the two pound coin was introduced and I think that was the 90s so just little things like that have come into play and the notes the the, the monetary notes are different now to the way they used to be and they used to be really flimsy and dirty and paper. Now they seem to be more like like plasticky. Uh, I mean, I'd, it was so hot last week. I was worried that my my ten pound note was going to melt, so I had to take it out of my underpants and just put it back in the wallet. Because I was worried that it was going to get too hot. So, if things have changed over the years when it comes to the money, and I'm trying to backtrack in my mind to f try and remember why I was talking about money. I don't remember. How did I get onto the subject of talking about? money from talking about making websites oh yeah the the different so I, my only game that I liked okay no that's wrong there's only no there's three games that I liked I, there's four or four five maybe five See, my dad was really into like new gadgets because he's an electrician, and he he I don't know if that's the reason, but he just he liked new stuff, uh, like new technology. I mean, so uh, you know what's like, like when the video recorders came out, he got a video recorder. And the first video recorder we had was a 2000 system. I think it was Philips 
the Philips 2000 and the tapes were really long about six hours long and you could record both sides like a, an audio tape and we used to rent videos from the video shop and stuff like that then and also tape stuff off the telly and it was quite good to have a long tape because this was like the early 80s or like late 70s early 80s when the television went through a stage of showing really really long television shows one was called Shogun who had Richard Chamberlain in it and it lasted for about three days each episode and it was I really liked it actually but it was really long proper really long and I probably fell asleep while I was watching it but then there wasn't that much on telly we only had to what one how many channels did we have BBC one BBC two and IT three I I know BBC one BBC two and ITV yeah so in them days there was only three channels in the like late 70s early 80s and then channel 4 came along uh, I'm not sure what year and it was in the early 80s as well I mean like 84 maybe 82 but having three channels and at around midnight everything kind of stopped I don't mean the whole world you know start just froze I mean the the television would just I think the BBC would play the national anthem and we'd all stand to attention and salute the television and stuff like that and I think the BBC did the same and ITV I think they had something else that they did because they were mavericks and then there'd be nothing on television until probably uh, 6 o'clock in the morning when television you know, the early morning news started now that didn't affect me because I was a, I was a child a young child and I would be in I'd be asleep so I wasn't wasn't laying there thinking oh I wish wish we had more channels so we could watch more telly because well firstly that's all I knew you know I didn't know anything more than just having three channels I didn't care you know there's plenty on television for me I was happy I'd, I'd watch pretty much anything you know there was I was very unfussy when it came to watching television you know I think the I don't know what the right term would be but I was I've always loved television ever since I was a, a little kid and I I know that some people call it the idiot box and you know it sort of dumbs you down and stuff but 
there's a lot of really good stuff on telly you know like documentaries and educational political uh, as well as like comedy drama and I do I'd, I love television I don't watch it anywhere near as much as I used to and I'm not watching it now technically it is on but it's got on mute but it's on a radio station so there is no moving images I've got it on LBC leading Britain's conversation so I spend more time listening to the radio probably than I do watching television because I quite like hearing different people's perspectives about a particular subject and it kind of yeah I find that interesting so I feel it kind of I feel it broadens my or expands my brain a bit plus you know there's so much choice with all these streaming channels like Netflix and Amazon and Now TV YouTube of course um, so I I watch YouTube videos that the main kind of the only videos that I watch on YouTube are boxing so I watch some boxing on there and the other stuff is like motivational stuff like Bob Bob Proctor or um, who else Zig Ziglar and there's Les Brown there is John Rones John John Rone yeah there's another one I mean there's uh, Anthony Anthony what's his name Anthony he did the Awaken the Giant Within Anthony Robbins that's it I don't listen to much of his stuff but that's probably because I listened to a lot of it in the past and I've also read his books God, they're massive books huge big I mean I don't even think he could fit them in his mouth they're so big they're really big thick book and he you know I was it Awaken the Giant Within what's the other one because he had two like, really big books well not just big as in thick but popular I think Awaken the Giant Within was probably the most popular one yeah so I need to I'd like I think I need to reread that again reread it read it yeah I sometimes wish I was a vampire because then I get to live forever and then I get to read every single book that I want imagine how cool that would be is you get to you get you know you get to read everything you get to watch every single film that you want to watch every single television program you want to watch 
you get to kind of you could travel to every single country you could yeah that would be so cool you could you could learn every every language why would you want to you could learn every subject that you're interested in and get degrees but you wouldn't be able to get degrees unless you had the money but I mean, technically, if you're going to live forever, you could rob a bank and make sure you hide the money. And if you get caught, you could spend 15 years in prison because it wouldn't make any difference if you were going to live forever, would it? And then you could get out and dig up your money and spend that on university courses because I don't think you'd be able to get a student loan eventually they're going to kind of say well you've already had 700 student loans Mr JJ Uh, over the last uh, 16,000 years you perhaps you know need to start paying them back well how much do I owe then Uh, let's work it out Uh, 400 million and the interest monthly is 2.2 million oh okay is that all so yeah I I think that'd be good and you'd never ever have to have an argument with anybody would you and you're probably thinking why why would you never have to have an argument just because you're going to live forever well think about it you're always going to have the last laugh you don't have to do anything so be good I quite like the idea of that being a vampire I mean there's some downsides obviously but I don't really eat garlic anyway but you'd have to be careful I mean some some food places they're not as careful as they could be with the food that they present as far as its contents and labelling its contents so you have to avoid garlic what other things should I have to avoid? Sunlight. Well, it's not too difficult. I sleep sleep during the day anyway. It just means that I'd have to stay indoors until, well, during the summer, just a little bit longer. In the winter, it pretty much starts getting dark about three in the afternoon. what else I suppose I don't know having to go out hunting at night would I don't know it'd just be a, cause there's stuff on telly that I want to watch so I don't know I don't fancy having to do that And also, I'd have to uh, uh, just uh, just don't know, the idea of I don't even like touching humans. I don't, I don't think it would be very pleasant to have to drink the blood. Ooh, I drink your blood. So I don't know. I think it would be other than that. I think it could be quite an interesting experience. The only thing is, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but I'm, I think vampires, are they supposed to only drink the blood of virgins? 
problem is I live in Essex so I'd have to travel quite a distance to find a virgin so yeah also I think probably the biggest downfall of being a vampire is brushing your hair you know you leave in your house and you never know what your hair looks like or even worse what if you have a little bogey hanging out of your nose and you don't know it's there because there's no you can't look in the mirror so you're going, you know walking around and walk up to someone's oh, oh why don't you join me in everlasting life oh, just one bite and you'll be with me forever and we can live the and the other person is thinking oh he's got a bogey hanging out of his nose I don't know if we're to tell him that or not. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's one of the problems. I do wonder if can vampires have a bath? I mean, some of the old. vampire films like Countess Dracula pretty sure she used to have a bath but it wasn't water it was it looked like red wine I, I used to like some of those old films some of them got a little bit silly though Yes, you know, Bride of Frankenstein. Frankenstein's butler. They seem to run out of titles and storylines. Dracula joins butlins. You know, it's kind of. Oh, what have we got? Because Christopher Lee was really popular as Dracula. And of course, Boris Karloff was, I guess, the most famous Frankenstein. Or Frankenstein's monster. But who's the other? Bella Lugosi. He was another famous Dracula, wasn't he? Bela Lugosi. Who did I say was Frankenstein then? Was that Bela Lugosi? Or Herman Munster? Oh, I don't know. I know he was tall. It's very tall. I used to like uh, the monsters when I was a kid, because you know it was on in the sixties. But I was, I didn't watch it till the eighties. It used to be on, I think it was on BBC Two. Around like six six thirty, in the evening, and I used to watch it. And the Adams family as well. It used to be on. They might have even been on one after each other. But I just loved. I loved both of them. Yeah, I probably like. I loved the Munsters more than the Adams family. You had Herman Munster and Grandad, and they were the two main characters, really. I mean, you had Herman's wife and Herman's son, 
who is a werewolf. And I don't remember, did he have... Oh, the... didn't they have a niece that lived there that was just completely normal? Wasn't a monster, wasn't anything, but she just lived there with them. Like a cousin or a niece or something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then they used to drive around in a big hearse. I say big hearse, like what other kind are there? You know? I don't think they make mini hearses. They're all big, aren't they? Don't know what kind of car I'd want if I ever, if I ever actually became an adult and learnt to drive. I don't know. I think I kind of go in two directions. Either I'd go for something really big and tough, you know. Uh, and kind of indestructible. I want to say that I don't mean uh, Knight Rider kit from the Knight Rider. Uh, you know, I mean like a really tough vehicle. I don't mean a tank, um, armor plated or anything like that. Just, just I don't know, just something big. Or maybe something like a Lamborghini something that's just ridiculously expensive and show offy and not at all tough as in those cars are flimsy and they're basically made of paper, really expensive paper. I'm surprised they they stick to the ground the way they do. I'm surprised they don't fly away. And if I did have one, you know what I'd do? I would have it a luminous green. Because no one does that. You always have to have a yellow, don't you? A bright yellow or, you know, white or red or so everyone can see it. The thing is, anybody that's impressed by a Lamborghini is going to look at your Lamborghini car regardless of what colour it is. They're not impressed by the colour. I think I'd like an invisible one. So what I'd do is I'd have it the same colour as the road. And then it'd be invisible. Potentially dangerous, actually. When I think about it, that probably wasn't a good idea. But yeah, I like the idea of invisibility in a car. So I don't know if invisibility would be a superpower that I would want. I think I'd like to have it as part of a collection of powers. Because I figure if I'm going to have a power, I might as well be greedy and have lots. And I think that's why Superman has always been so popular. Because he seems to be able to do pretty much anything that he wants 
You know, he's faster than anyone else. He's stronger than anyone else, including all the other superheroes. He seems to be just... everything apart from invisibility the thing is though I might have mentioned this before I don't know but during and this this is a spoiler so this is Man of Steel so if you haven't seen the Man of Steel and you don't want to know anything about it then um, and you're a fan and you intended to watch it then why have you waited six years that could be a question but it's I'm going to just mention that something that happens in the film so uh, spoiler alert and all that stuff all that jazz so there's a, a scene in the film where Superman, Clark Kent, he's he hasn't got his uh, he hasn't got his flaps out, um, the cape, so he's he's just like in his normal clothes, clothes, and there's a like a little whirlwind, typh typhoon, typhoon thing that's blowing cars and all that stuff and he's in a, under a shelter with a bunch of people and his dad not Marlon Brando uh, or he had a different dad didn't he he's got, he got more than one dad so he has got Marlon Brando and then ah. so I'm sure his dad was also one of the Duke boys from the Dukes of Hazard. So that's one of his dads. So he's got two dads there. Then he had the bodyguard, Whitney Houston's bodyguard, and he also moonlighted as uh, Robin Hood. So she had him as well, or he had him as well. So that's three fathers. And also Gladiator. So she, he had Gladiator as well. As, uh, so he had four fathers. It's quite a lot, isn't it? That's a uh, I was gonna say it's a bukkake nightmare, but it's uh yeah, it's it's so he's his his dad's there and he his dad's being about to be engulfed by this whirlwind typhoon thing and Clark or Superman but he's not as he hasn't got his flap out you know he's just normally dressed his cape's not out his flappy cape and he does nothing when he could move like because he didn't want anyone to see him uh, be Superman but he could move so quickly that no one would have been able to see him anyway 
so he, he didn't save his dad. But maybe he figured oh, I've got three left. But that just seems a bit wrong. And I've kind of never forgiven him for it. Because that's the one you could say, well, that's the one thing you you don't you don't get. It doesn't seem realistic. What about a flying bit? You know, yeah, fair enough. But I just I don't know. I mean I suppose I should move on eventually, I should let it go, but you know, it's like ah oh, just wound me up. But then Superman in the you had Superman versus Batman and then the next one which was it had um, he was in that as well it was really, really weird everybody knew that Superman was going to be in that film but they didn't show him on the cover they showed Aquaman, they showed The Flash, they showed Batman, and they showed Wonder Woman, and they showed the Bionic Man bloke. Uh, it's, I don't know, what you, is it Cyborg? Is that his name in it? And... Is it? Yeah, it's a flash, yeah. So, Cyborg. So, you had those five. But there was a point where all of them took on Superman and none of them could beat him all at the same time. He was too strong, too powerful, too fast, and everything for all of them, all at the same time. And these were these big, strong superheroes. And then I wonder, well, what about the Hulk? What about the Hulk? Wouldn't the Hulk stand a chance surely but then the Hulk got beaten up in one of the Marvel films it's like twice in fact he got beaten up so the Hulk's supposed to be invincible and the idea is he gets bigger the angrier he gets So how can he be beaten up? But he did. It's very weird. I, I do like watching superhero films because I wanted to be a superhero. I want to say, you know, I wanted to be a superhero. You're probably thinking I was seven years old running around in a Superman costume. Well, I'm talking about last year. And I look silly in a Superman costume. That's why I don't go out in it anymore. I only wear it at home. I used to have a Superman costume. Not I had a Spider-Man costume I had. That's it, Spider-Man. And when I was little, probably talking 
seven or eight, Spider-Man came out in a cinema. And I think I went with my brother to watch it. And I'm pretty sure, pretty, pretty sure it was a Saturday afternoon. And there was two films on. So it was, there was, those were the days where they'd show two films. Like a, um, the main film would be on second, but before that they'd show a, like a full, a full, full film, but like an older film. So the first film was. I think it was Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. And then it was Spider-Man. That was the second film. So we'd be in the cinema for like three, maybe three and a half hours. Maybe longer. Depending on how long each film lasted. Because not all films are the same length, are they? Plus, they'd have adverts in between the movies as well as before the first one. And then, the I suppose, the screen would come down. And then, because I used to like to sit at the front of the cinema... On the front seat, well, I did not. There wasn't just one seat. Um, I did live in a small place, but there was more than one seat. But I used to just like to sit at the front row. I don't know why. I haven't done that for a long time. My preference now would. Well, I used to like sitting in the back row, you know, like 15 years ago. And I haven't been to the cinema probably for maybe three years, four years. And the last film I went to see was... I remember where I was sitting because I sat in the wrong seats because the good thing is if you go to the cinema when it's quiet you can buy a cheap seat and then go and sit in an expensive seat it's wonderful I highly recommend it And also, I think you can kind of, if you're, if you're willing to manoeuvre a little bit, you can stay and sneak into the other cinemas and watch a bunch of different films. Because you don't get checked on the way out. Don't check your ticket on the way out. What was the film that I saw? Pretty sure it was a, a superhero film, but I don't remember what one. I don't remember, I honestly can't remember. What I do remember is there wasn't many people in the cinema and I sat in one of the nice seats and it's like right in the middle of the cinema but there's more room for your legs and you can stretch out and vibrate in chairs, you know, just general stuff. Uh, the young lad kneeling down uh, shiny shoes 
So it's, you know, everything was good. It was everything catered for. There was a uh, someone in there just in on each end. There was someone frying up flapjacks, like and uh, pancakes and stuff like that. Or as as she kept saying to me, they're frapes. I said what? I said they're frapes. They're frapes. I said no pancakes. No, they're frapes. So why are you whispering like that? It's because there's a movie's going. I don't want to disrupt people. Well, don't you think frying, frying like food, all that banging around, don't you think that's a little bit disruptive? She said, does that mean you don't want the pancakes then? I said, well, no, yeah, I do. Well, I thought you said they were frapes. She said, oh, damn, I forgot. Then she got some juggling balls out and started juggling for three whole minutes. Didn't drop a ball for three whole minutes. But I don't remember the film. It's weird. I do remember there was someone sitting about uh, six seats away from me, coughing, just not in a coffin, he was coughing, spluttering and coughing continuously. I tell you, it put me off my bowl of soup. Seeing Spider Man, I do remember getting home and Mork and Mindy was on. Or was that when I went to see Superman? I remember I dreamt about Superman 2. I actually had a dream, because I've probably seen the adverts for it on telly, Vision. And I actually had a really, uh, I was going to say explicit, that's not the right word, but really realistic dream about Superman 2. And then my brother said to me, because that was the Friday night, and the Saturday morning my brother said to me, should we go and see Superman too? I kicked him in the shin and I ran off. I said, nah, he can't make me do anything. He can't make me go if I don't want to. And he said, I thought you wanted to go. I said, I remember, I, I do, yeah, I do want to go. He said, why did you kick me in the shin for then? I said, I don't know, I'm your younger brother. I'm just, you know, that's kind of what we got going on. I'm supposed to annoy you. He said, well, you, you, you do that verbally anyway. You don't have to actually physically do anything. I said, oh, really? Is what I say annoying enough? He said, yeah, and and more than, and more. It's definitely, definitely enough. I said, oh, that's brilliant. Said, well, let's go then. So we held hands and skipped all the way to the cinema and watched Superman 2. And then we came home and watched Mork and Mindy, if I do boo. I'm sure we had sausage rolls for dinner. But I might be wrong there. And that was in the house. We were living in the house where my nan and granddad moved into. And uh, lived for many, many years long time I'm not sure if I saw Superman 3 at the cinema I reckon I must have done but I was probably old enough to go on my own yeah probably went on my own yeah 
I reckon I did. Yeah, I loved it. I loved because uh, Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor was in it, and you know he was because I'd seen him in Brewster's Millions and Stir Crazy and was it White Lightning and Silver Streak. Actually, yeah, it's not White Lightning, it's Silver Streak. Um, and, yeah, so I kind of really liked him. I didn't know that he... I'd never seen this stand-up comedy, so I didn't know that he was rude. And uh, it was like a really adult comic, but I just loved his films. He was so funny. And uh, the funny faces that he'd make. It was good. Uh, he was definitely the star of Superman 3. So, also, of course, Superman was, and Lois Lane as well. Lois Lane. So, I can't believe, like, Lois Lane. Like, in the new films. How did she go go from working in an office as a receptionist to being Superman's girlfriend? And that's that's a leap, isn't it? That's just like just shows you you don't know what's around the corner. Anything can happen. It's amazing. So I'm going to go now. I was going to talk about something uh, important, but I can't remember what it was now. I was going to talk about games. <sighs> Never mind. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>